Right, did, did it. That, that was kind of ridiculous. That was a ridiculous, as a, yes, as opposed to irregular faces. But people that, you know, are, are here a lot, and we have people new, new guests that are coming for the very first time, and we have uh, people that are returning after not being here for a period of time, and my heart is just like on fire. I'm like so excited. It is a great, great morning. Uh, I'm not only in the house, but I'm in the house the same time Reverend Andy Ross is in the house. <laughs> now, the last time I watched him, he was saying, where is she? She's never here when I'm here. See, you should never say always or never. <laughs> I I'm here and he's here. And besides that, we have the amazing Paradiso and Rasamahi here <laughs> with their <laughs> unbelievable talent and gifts. So it is, it is, it is already an amazing day. So thank you very much for being here, and thank you to all of you who have allowed us to come into your homes this morning through the technology of live streaming. Thank you very much for including us in your day. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Reverend Dusty Rippelmeyer. I am the senior minister of this amazing community. We are part of a larger organization uh, called Centers for Spiritual Living, which um, follows the teachings of a man, a wonderful man, named Ernest Holmes. And we believe that there is one God, one power, one presence, one creative energy back of everything in the world, and that we were created by this power and presence, that we were created in its image and likeness, and therefore that same creative power we have. So we have the ability to create the experiences of our lives. And whether we know it or not, we actually have been doing that throughout all of our life. So what we are here to do is to really support each other as we um, begin to become more aware of and to practice really consciously doing that, consciously creating the experiences of our lives in a way that really works for us and works for everyone on the planet. And so we are really glad that you're here with us today. So the reading for today is by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he says, The atoms of our bodies are traceable to the stars that manufactured them in their cores and exploded these enriched ingredients across our galaxy billions of years ago. For this reason, we are biologically connected to every other living thing in the world. We are chemically connected to all molecules on Earth. And we are atomically connected to all atoms in the universe. We are not figuratively, but literally, stardust. Goodness. Uh, it's like getting up on a Monday, <laughs> but, but different, but like moving out of eternity into temporality, moving out of subconsciousness into consciousness. Goodness gracious. Ooh, okay. Don't break a ball. <laughs> Don't break a ball. <laughs> Don't break a ball. They're expensive. Dusty said they're expensive. <laughs> they're valuable. They're valuable. <laughs> wow. That's an even better word. Is that expensive? No, it's valuable. It has value. It does. It does. Part of what I do in my life, part of what I'm interested in, the core of my pursuit is the pursuit of what is, of what is going on, of what is happening. Because when something like this happens, I can't ignore it, because something happened here. I don't know what it is, but something happened to me in my relation to it, to it as an object, I'm sure, in its relation to you. Something's going on. If I could tell the story of it after our conversation about some of your intentions, I would say that creation just happened. 
I would say that gods and goddesses are moving together and interacting and creating life right in front of us. I would say the eternal is becoming temporal. I would say the universal is becoming personal. And I would say that I get to witness it. That's some of the things I would say, maybe, if I was saying them. (laughs) Am I saying them? (laughs) But there's another part of me, somewhere around this area, that also wonders if that's the case. The part of me that asks, what's going on? What's happening? What is actually happening when music and vibration enters my being? What is actually going on? When I hug my wife in the morning and I feel the pulsation of the universe and she says, you're just horny. I I want to know what's happening. When my daughter was born, and she was given to me, and I held her for the first time, is that just a human connection? Is this just my offspring? Did I just create this, or is there something more to this? When I watched the sunrise this morning over the trees from my porch and the crisp, cool air met the rays of the sun, I want to know, are these just molecules reaching out to my eyes? Or can I see something different? I want to know the truth. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) That's what I want to know. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what's happening. I want to know the truth of what actually is. I want to penetrate it, feel it in my being, and I want to talk to you about it. I think we all want that. Do you want truth? Yeah. yeah. You want truth? You can say it. Do you want truth, Nika? Yeah. <laughs> Monica wants truth. We read the newspaper in the morning, and there's a story. And we ask ourselves, is that true? What actually happened here? We see a man on a podium on a TV screen. Is he on a podium? I think he's in front of a podium. Maybe he's on a podium. (laughs) And we ask ourselves, what's going on here? Is he telling me the truth? I want to know what actually is. I want to know what's actually happening. We meet a human being. What are you thinking? (laughs) I look at all you, and I'm like, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What is your opinion of me? Do you actually think I'm going to break one of these? (laughs) No way. No way. I want to know the truth of you. I want to know the truth of each of you. I want to know what's going on in your head. I want to know what you're feeling. I want to know what's going on in your heart. When I touch a tree, I want to know the truth of the tree. When I look at the cosmos and feel the vibration of life, I want to know what's going on. I want to know the truth. But there's a question that smacks that in the head. Can I know the truth? Can I know the truth of what is. And if I wanted to know the truth, how would I go about it? How do I know if that man on the podium is telling the truth? How do I know what actually happened? When I listen to music and I feel the vibration in my blood, how do I know what's actually going on? How do I know the truth? And that's what I've been thinking about all week long. All week long I've been seeking to penetrate the truth. Walking around the block in the rain sitting up in bed in the middle of the night. I had a revelation. (laughs) (laughs) No, a revelation. This is important. (laughs) I have a lot of revelations, so (laughs) you understand from her. But what kept coming to me when I thought about the individual and the universal, when I thought about truth, what kept reaching out to me was experience. We're all alive, aren't we? I hope we are. We're all here. We're all present. And that means that we are having an experience of life. Because that's what life is. Life is one long experience. 
I mean, sure, the things that you experience, the objects around you change, the people, the places, the situations, how you react to them, your emotional responses, your mental interpretations, but life is really just one long experience. So if we want to know the truth of what is actually going on here, if we don't want to be confused anymore like I am, then maybe we should look at experience. Maybe that's a good place to start. Maybe if we want to know the truth of what is, we should begin with the experience itself. What do you say? Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Then let's do an experiment. Don't break an expensive bowl. <laughs> a valuable, a valuable. Yeah, you know, I just come up with words and say them. You ready? Yep. Man, I'm excited. Woo-wee! I'm excited. You're excited too at home. All right, so we're looking at a podium, right? Wow, how early is it? We're looking at a podium, right? Yes, we're looking at a podium. That means that we are experiencing a podium, right? Right, we're experiencing a podium. This podium is here. So we're going to call this podium the object of our experience. We're going to call it the object because every experience takes two to tango. Did you know it takes two to tango? It takes two to tango. It takes a subject, hello subject, and it takes an object. So this podium is the object of our experience. We need an object to experience, right? I think we do. So we're going to experience this podium together. What do we know? Let's, let's get into the truth. Mm, we're going to get into the truth of this podium. What do we know about this podium? What's the truth? What's going on? What is? Okay, what is? Okay, okay, what do I see? What does it look like? It's flat. Valuable. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a valuable. It's flat. Monica says it's flat. Okay, it's flat. I like that. It's flat. Okay, it's flat. Okay, what else does it look like? It's, uh, it's, um, it's clear on the top. We could see through it. It's clear on the top. Maybe some kind of polythurane. I shouldn't say... <laughs> Scientific words, I don't know what they mean, but some kind of plastic material on the top. That's cool. It's shiny. It's got a shiny pole. What did you say this morning? You said it's rotund. It's it has a certain roundness to it. I feel it has a certain roundness to it. Okay, so it's, it's flat on the top. You can probably see through it. It has a certain roundness to it. It's metallic. It's shiny. It's metallic and shiny. So we know some things about this podium. We know some truths about this podium because we're experiencing it, right? It's the object, so we're experiencing it. And we have just discovered something. We have just discovered the first truth about experience. We stumbled upon it. Did you know we did? We did, just now. Wait, hold on, I lost it. There it is. Every experience is human at least every experience we will have because everything we know about this podium is mediated through a human body i just told you what i saw i can tell you what i touch it's flat i can tell you what it tastes like hold on <laughs> it's probably metallic but everything we know about this podium is mediated through the human body, through the five senses, through this wonderful vehicle of life. So number one, every experience you have is human. So therefore, the truth is mediated through a human experience. Well done. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Woo! Okay. There's something else, though. There's something else here. So we've seen this podium. We know it's mediated to us through our senses. However, no, 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 Ruth, no. I can't know what you're seeing. I can't know what you're smelling. Can you smell it? 
All I know is not only what my human body tells me, all I know about this podium is what my human body tells me. I don't know what you're experiencing. Yes, we've come up with some words to have a conversation. Words like roundness, flatness, metallic, taste. <laughs> and those words we use to have a conversation so we can agree upon what we're experiencing. But the truth is, I don't know what you see when you see this. I can't know because I'm encased in this human body. So one, experience is human. Two, experience is individual. Experience is personal. I don't know what you see when you look at this. I can't know unless I have a conversation with you, unless I engage, and then we can have some words and some dialogue, but I still don't know. Imagine how that would change your entire outlook on the world. I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know. Talk about humility. I want to tell you a story. You like stories? I love stories. <sighs> I remember the first time I saw this podium. It was actually in another spiritual community at the time. I sat down and a man stood up and started speaking. And his words were like butter on the grits of my soul. <laughs> forget that. Forget what I... <laughs> But the man who spoke that day at that podium changed my entire life. He changed my entire outlook on life. In fact, after that service, I went and introduced myself. I said, hey, I'm so-and-so, I do so-and-so, blah, 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 so-and-so. And I kneeled down and I kissed his feet. Literally, I kissed, this is not like, you know, I do a lot of metaphors. And, no, I kissed his feet. It was humorous, but it was also a signal or a sign of my devotion to him. He became my mentor after that and guided me into the ministry. I remember the first time I stood at this podium and delivered a sermon to him by himself, just sitting there. And I started talking. Actually, at first I started moving. He's like, whoa, <laughs> boop, pause. <laughs> but I remember the first time I stood at this podium. I remember the second time I stood at this podium. And I remember the first time. I moved it out of the way. I remember the first time I said, don't really need the podium anymore. So when I look at this podium through my human body in my individual way, I am not just seeing a podium. I'm seeing my life reflected in a podium. Truth is human. Experience is human. Truth is individual. Experience is individual. Truth is complicated. It's complex. Because experience is complicated. Experience is complex. I don't know what you see when you look at this podium because I haven't had the experiences of your life. And next week, when you're sitting in that chair, maybe you'll move around a little bit, I don't know, and you look at this podium, you'll see it in a completely different way. You might not reflect on it, but you'll see a completely different podium because you'll have another week of experience. Truth, it's human to us. It's individual to the person, personal to the individual. Truth, it's complex, it's complicated, it's subject to interpretation. So how do we know what's going on? How do we know what's going on? Because this, to me, sounds like truth becomes relative. It sounds like truth is subjective. It changes for everyone. Can't we know anything? Can't we know anything? Is there a universal truth? How do I know what's going on if it constantly changes? How do I know what's going on if what you know what's going on is different than what I know what's going on? Marvin Gaye was right. <laughs> What's going on? Now you see why I'm always so confused. Because <laughs> I think about these things. My wife and I are on a walk, and she's like, that's a beautiful tree. And I say, it is. Although I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> I just know what I'm seeing, you know? And it's like, I mean, what is red? What is red? <laughs> I 
I want to know. I want to know about universal truth. I want to know if there is something that's common to all of us. I want to know if there's a truth beyond just these objects that move and change and these interpretations of objects that move and change. I want to know if there is something else. Do you want to know? Well, one of you does. <laughs> Do you want to know? Yeah. Do you want to know? Yeah. Let's get back to it then. Okay, I am looking at a podium. Say it with me. I am looking at a podium. Let's put experience in there. I am experiencing a podium. Keep it going. I am experiencing a podium. Come on. I am experiencing a podium. Take podium out. I am experiencing. I am experiencing. I am experiencing. I am experiencing. Take experience out. I am. I am. I am. Am's gone. I, 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 I. The podium's gone. The experience has changed. I haven't changed. I haven't changed. Every experience is a subject and an object. The subject hasn't changed. Life is one long experience had by a subject. I know what you're thinking. Oh, yes, this body. No. Did you know your body is just an object that you're experiencing life through? You can tell yourself what it feels to have a body. If you can feel what it has to... Okay, hold on. I can get it. I can get it. I can get it. If I can feel what it's like to have a body, then I am not my body because I can feel what it's like to have a body. There we go. The subject never changes. The universal truth of all that is is not out here in these objects. It's in here in these subjects. The one that's experiencing life. The one that is witnessing life. The one that sees, hears, tastes, touches, and feels, and knows that that's a miracle. You want to know the truth? Do you want to know the truth? Experience is a miracle. It's the miracle of creation. A subject can't experience itself. God, the subject, can't experience itself, so it creates an object and says, there I am. Oh, I can touch it. I can feel it. I'm alive. I mean, that's what life is all about. It's a bunch of gods or God moving around saying, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm experiencing life. I'm walking. I'm tasting. I'm touching. I'm feeling. I have become life so that I can experience it. Truth is a relationship. Truth is a relationship between a subject and an object because the truth is that experience is a miracle. That relationship is a miracle. The truth is in that experience. 
We have such limited access to podiums. We have such limited access to people with opinions and with intentions of their own. We have such limited access to sounds. We have such limited access to the world through this body. But we have ultimate access to the one who experiences it. Because that's what we are. That's what I am. The Pharisees said, Jesus! <laughs> I don't know if they yelled, but I like yelling. <laughs> <laughs> what gives you the authority to say what you say? <laughs> Who are you to say what you say? <laughs> I don't know if they said it like that. <laughs> Who are you <laughs> to say what you say? <laughs> Before Abraham, I am before Moses, I am. Before the foundations of the universe, I am. After death, Monica, I am. Experiences shift. They come and go. The objects change, but the one experience them is always the same. If you want the truth, Look to the experience of life. If you want the truth, feel what it's like to touch a tree. Feel what it's like to hear a song. Feel what it's like to have a body, to have an emotion, anger, passion, fear, joy. It's the experience of that. That's where the truth is. That's where the truth is. And we have access to that all the time. We walk around with it. And the more you look for it, the more you look for it, the more you feel it and touch it and taste it, the more you realize that I'm not just a subject looking at objects. I'm a subject looking at subjects. Because each and every being in this beautiful universe is having the same experience. We may not agree. We may argue. We may look different. We may feel different at times. This tree, this squirrel, this plant, this human being with these opinions. But they're all just subjects having the same experience of life. And if you look a little deeper, just a little deeper, just a little little deeper you'll stumble upon it you'll fall into it the kingdom of heaven nirvana eternity moksha release and you'll hit a place where you the subject of your life is the subject of every life and you see yourself in a tree. You see yourself in a person. You see yourself in a grain of sand. You see yourself always. There I am. 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 Oh, there I am. Oh, there I am. Oh, there I am. Oh, there, there I am. There I am. There I am. Universal truth. Universal truth. I want you to pray with me for a moment, but I want you to pray with your eyes open, if you don't mind. I want you to look around. Take a look around. Look, 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 look around. Mm, aren't they beautiful? We all look so different, don't we? We all look so different. Just a bunch of subjects experiencing life. And as you look, I will just say that I am grateful for this moment here and now. I am grateful for the eternal moment made physical in this incarnation here. I'm thankful for my frailty. I'm thankful for my opinions. I'm thankful for my story. I'm thankful for your story, which is our story. 
I'm thankful for knowledge, but I'm also thankful for wisdom that watches knowledge, chuckles at it and says, well, you don't know so much. I'm thankful for all of that, and I'm thankful for you for being here and sharing this moment with me. I'm thankful for us, and I'm thankful for I.